Folks, uh, we'll call the meeting to order for Jackson Select Board, uh, July 23rd at 3.30 here in the town office. Uh, first on the docket is the approval minutes from June 25th. Um, and uh, we had, let's see, Bob missed this meeting, so and so you and I have to, mm -hmm. I assume everybody read the minutes. Yeah. I will make a motion to approve the minutes from the June 25th meeting. And I will second that. I need a pen. <laughs> Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Second, uh, Selectman set a meeting from June 9th that Barbara was unable to attend, unfortunately. But I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes from the July 9th meeting. And I will second those. Any discussion on those minutes? No. Nope. Look good to me. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sir, mm. um, update on action items. Um, we had uh, nothing for us, nothing for us with a G at the end. Julie had a double head parking. I know I saw they brought some more gravel in there. Yeah, this was their response to. They have some more gravel staged up there and plan to finish the parking lot in the next month or so. So they're early want to cut. Uh, that really would have cut us off before we could put the finishing touches on it, and we're not planning to do any dedication for the lot. Okay. I guess we're not going to do any dedication for the lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not going to neglect you on that. Um, any thoughts on any future dedication or anything like that? Or I don't know if we need to, or a grand opening or not, but I guess not. I'm not interested in that, I guess. Not a big enough project to warrant a ribbon cutting. Huh? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, maybe some signage though up at the the um, upper. I don't know what you want to call it the upper trail. Was it the southern entrance, the the newer of the two trails? I did see some cars parked up there by John Peckowitz's place the other day. I think maybe we need some signage to tell people to move to mm -hmm. the uh, the established lot. So that was kind of the whole purpose of it was to combine those two parking areas into one so people wouldn't be parking on the road. I don't know what your thoughts on that are, but... Who would be responsible for signage? Uh, well, I guess technically we would be. We have done the no parking signs up there in the previous years. It would probably be a good idea then to do it and preempt any other problems before we get complaints, right? Right, and also obviously August is the big month yeah. coming up there, hiking for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, blueberry picking is pretty popular up there. Um, is this something you think about, Bob? Uh, I had no problem with it. Um, th that is, parking along that road in non-winter months is... is uh, the big issue. Mm. In non-winter months? Mm. I'm sorry, winter months. Sorry. Yeah, but in non-winter in, uh, uh, non months, it's, it's permitted, right? Um, you, is it allowed, parking on that? I thought we were trying to discourage it. That was my, my thought process on it, just because, you know, it does get choked up there and, you know, sometimes people go onto John's property to when there's overflow parking, they'll park right in front of his driveway, literally. Mm. And in his driveway in the past, I've, I've seen cars there before, um, you know, especially on weekends and things like that. I just... Kind of How do you want to, well, if you come up with some wording then? And, uh, Post some signs, is what you're thinking. Can we look into that and s see what we can do? See, talk to Pat about that, yeah. see, what, see, what's, Pat and, uh, see what they have for input on that. Yeah. I, I know John, John has had, had that happen to him before. He couldn't even get into his yeah. driveway sometimes. Yeah. All right. Um, next meetings are August 13th and 27th on Tuesday at 3.30 here. And September meetings are the 10th and 24th. 
Um, just a quick note before we go on to the meat of our meeting here, I'd just like to quick mention uh, the passing of Dick Badger and, and our condolences to the family and, and friends, Dick, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to attend the, the services and um, get to talk to some people and, and uh, feel, you know, obviously uh, sadness for the little loss and uh, certainly hope that, uh, you know, things move on nicely for their family and stuff. Um, but uh, it was nice to see people in an unfortunate circumstance, but as we know, those things happen. Mm -hmm. um, Quite a journey now to pay respects at the church. Mm -hmm. Quite a gentleman and always been a friend of my family and mm -hmm. played a lot of tennis with my dad years ago and, and uh, certainly a good friend. But um, sorry to hear it go. Yes. Uh, building inspector. Item four, that would be Kevin Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> that would be you. The busy man here. Yeah, We're up to 50, what? We're up to wow. 60 building permits? I lost count. <laughs> How's that look in terms of numbers for the year? Um, We're half, well, we were halfway last, through. We're probably about right where we are in the last couple of years. Like the last two years, it's been just over 100, I think, right? Mm -hmm. At the end, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes so. Busy. Yeah, it gets busy. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I put in my um, revised revenues and then I'm um, then you get it done. You see it. more of it. <laughs> you see yeah. It. And I know, yeah, I know there's there's stuff that people are talking about coming. You know, the other projects coming up this fall, so yeah, there probably will be a lot more. <laughs> so nothing to do. It's just. All right, what you got? Um, <clears throat> let me see. 69 Black Mountain Road. They're adding a porch around the the perimeter of the. Of the house. It's a big porch. Yeah. 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 Okay. So when you see 75 feet, it's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, 77 North Hampshire Ridge. Um, it was a deck that got ripped off in the snow this past winter. And rebuilding that and just small expansion of the walkway. Um, 18 Manor Way. Um, building a mudroom and garage with new floor hanging up servers. It's a lot of power there. Yeah. <laughs> I just noticed that to the four and a half service, but they're probably just upgrading everything. Two hundred is probably not enough. Wow. Well, yeah, when you see a two and a half service, usually it's like forty breakers in a panel. So if you go to the next panel, you might as well either you got to put a sub panel in, or you just add another two hundred amp service to it. Is that so normal? Two hundred is the first. That's yeah. most houses. Yeah, all two hundred amp services. Mm -hmm. That'll give you forty breakers. Wow. So how big is the garage? Uh, three car garage with just a room above it, no, you know, probably a pool table type thing. So you have an electric car? Would uh, that, that I don't know. I wonder, would that require more or different? Um, you, you, uh, yes, Sorry. I would say yes. No. It would, you'd you have to run either a 40 or 60 amp service yeah. off of that if you wanted yeah. a quick charge. Hmm. Okay. Because um, sometimes they do a slow charge at 120 volts or hmm. do it quicker at 240. Interesting. Hmm. Um, 35 Vista Way, it's a kitchen in there. Um, pretty fancy kitchen. Really? Yeah. Yeah, if you see the building permit, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> um, 288 Black Mountain Road, repair, um, cellar wall that fell in. Um, it was an old stolen foundation from probably in the 20s or 30s, and it actually snapped kind of right in half. Huh. So, excavating that, and going to re-pour that. <clears throat> Nine Pittman Hill Road, uh, replacing a rotten deck, a uh, new post to basically hold up the roof too. Um, and what else is happening in the um, building inspector world? Uh, the governor did sign the, um, there was a bill to update the building code from 2009 to 2015. He did sign it. It's going into effect um, August 15th, believe it or not. So that's the IBC, the IRC, uh, the mechanical code, the plumbing code, and the energy code will all be updated. Um, the electrical code is on its own little Schedule. cycle. Yeah, that's totally something different. Is there anything major in those things or just well, standard I, just, updates with um, new modern materials and well, all that stuff? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the plumbing stuff. You know, everyone's using the PEX and there's a lot of new fittings and stuff, crimp fittings, uh, press fittings. So a lot of that stuff now is it's going to be in the code. Um, it's been around for a while, people have been using it. Um, but some of the changes, the energy code's going to be a big thing. Um, most houses that you see built 
today are two by six exterior walls. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so the R value is R20, that's what the code is right now. But now in the brand new code, it's R20 with a continuous R5 over that, meaning inside or outside. So you have to put another layer of like half inch, no, probably even more, it's probably like one inch styrofoam. Oh, on the whole exterior. Like on the outside as well. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> so that's going to change like your, your window extensions. And, oh, yeah. You know, jam, your, oh, yeah. All that stuff. Extended and, yep. Oh, so you got to yeah, cal calculate that all in there. So, oh, wow. And they were fighting that. They, I think they wanted more, but the uh, homeowners, like the Builder Association, wanted less because of the cost and right. added factors. But it's a good thing because it's, it's going to save energy uh, mm -hmm. you know, home. So, um, yeah, a lot of people are going to be surprised by that. Um, another big thing is the um, between garages and going into the um, into the house. That door now has to be on a automatic closer. Sure. So well, that's fire door type so, thing. Yeah. Um, I can see when I leave, they'll take that right off. But hopefully, they keep it on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, but there's a lot of other little little things. Mm. I know they were fighting trying to get the railing high, uh, um, higher on decks, but that's mm -hmm. stayed at 36 inches. Mm -hmm. Well, 36. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think they wanted to go to 42, and that was it's like caging yeah. the end. Right. So, yeah. <coughs> Who's they? Who, who advocates for those um, changes? Just well, it's, it's, well, or? yeah, so you have the, you have like the um, inspectors like me, um, which is the uh, uh, New Hampshire building. Uh, officials um, and then you have like the fire uh, marshal's office and they're, we're all kind of on the same side and then you have the other side of people who want to keep the cost of mm -hmm. housing the down trades. Sure. Yeah, and not like have sprinklers put in houses and uh, stuff like that mm -hmm. gas insulation and yeah so there's this battle that goes on back and forth yeah for sure so and then they're hoping to get the, on this three-year cycle so every three years Hopefully it'll get updated just to keep up with all the modern mm. materials and stuff. Mm. When's the last time it was updated before this? It was nine, 2009. Well, we were in 2009, but I think, wow. boy, I think it goes, I, I don't think, I think it was either six or nine years before, wow. before this got updated, yeah. Um, I think it might have been 2003, because I think we have books at the station <laughs> 2003. Well, the fact that you have books shows so, how old it is. Yeah, that's it's right, because yeah, <laughs> you have to go out and buy all the code books, right. Yeah. So. Oh. Excellent. All right. Anybody have anything else? No. Thank you. Nice Thank hat, you. by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fire service meeting. All right, moving on to item number five, new business. Uh, item A is uh, the Northeast Regional White House visit. I just wanted to give a quick update. While I was on vacation in Virginia, and because it coincided with that, I got to go to the Northeast Leadership Day at the, um, actually, in the Eisenhower Executive Office building. It was really, really interesting. And the one person that was, I guess, the most um, interesting to hear from was Kendall Ehrlich, who is the, um, she's, she used to be the First Lady of Maryland, but she's on the drug national drug control policy and she gave sh several shout outs to new hampshire for the um progress that we've made because but be, you know the bad news is we've made so much progress because we have such a bad addiction um crisis but the things that new hampshire is doing to address the issue um, of addiction and trying to form safe stations and um, drug-free community initiatives and things but i did bring up the point that while there is a lot of state funding that's becoming available, there is still a shortage of where to send the folks once they're determined that they need mm -hmm. help and addiction centers, addiction counselors, and mental health counselors, period. So, you know, sort of how do we go from there? What I did walk away with um, was a list of many, many phone numbers and emails of White House and intergovernmental affairs folks and who to call. So in case we want to encourage any initiatives in our community. I have a good list of folks there. The other one that was um, interesting was um, Larry Kudlow, who used to do the Kudlow um, Chronicles, I believe it was, on TV, and he was very um, colorful and fun to listen to and had some good insightful thoughts on the economy. And then he 
ran out of time and they said no questions and he goes no no these people came a long way we're going to let them take questions so he actually blew off the white house to talk a little more so he was kind of fun it was an interesting um panel both the panels were interesting but it was a nice event to be able to go to as a local official and um, i ended up sitting next to the town manager and um, chief of police in a little town outside of Bangor, Maine, and he was really sort of interesting to speak to about some of the things that they do in their area. Um, so he has a population of over 2,000, but uh, because of the size of the population during the summer and stuff, he has 12 full-time police mm. chief, policemen mm. on his force and things like that. So we talked a little bit about that, but it was very nice to be welcomed there and to experience it. So if you guys ever can match up dates, it was, it was fun, fun mm. to be there. Nice area. How many people? About 200. And okay. so it was like the New York, all of New England, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, yeah. Delaware, a lot of folks from New York and New Jersey. It was amazing. Mm. And, um, but it was, yeah, it was mm. well attended. So, mm -hmm. so thanks for the opportunity for that. Mm. Thank you for going. Yeah, it was neat. Neat experience for sure. Yes. Um, Anything else? Okay. Item B, trust, trustees of trust funds withdrawal request. Uh, it says, Dear Trustees, the Board of Selectmen are requesting the following withdrawals from the trust funds as indicated below. Uh, $1,222.63 from the Maloon Groundwater Expendable Trust Fund, 0071. Invoice 27125, dated 63019 from HEB Engineering Company. Uh, I will take a motion to approve said withdrawal. I'll make that motion. And I will second the motion. Any discussion on it? None whatsoever. Didn't we, have like, three didn't we have like 3,000 in our budget? Too? Yes. So that came in we, far under. There are only 40, I think it's like 40% down on there. Okay. Um, yeah. But still going to come in under what we had, so that's nice. Yeah. Good. And actually, we changed that to the, um, the funds that we funded every year, so. Yeah. You know, Sure. Good. All right. Any other discussion? Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Oops, sorry. Did I pass? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Alrighty, item C is an exemption, uh, real estate. Um, it's a religious exemption. A religious church exemption church from the uh, church here in town, Jason. Jackson Community Church. And this is a Jason Call thing, and, and uh, he recommends to, to accept that rec uh, exemption. Um, any discussion on that? Nope. I'll take a motion to. Uh, entertain that exemption. I will make a motion to accept the exemption or recommend it. I'll well, second it. All right. By the way, it's lot V1-38 is the actual lot. Uh, any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Weird place for that signing, but I'll take it. Was it. Else to That's okay. <laughs> it's in the left hand corner, so it works for me. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> I, was of you. I know you are. I know you are. Brownie points. All we ever think yeah, about. Right. All we ever think about is me. All right. Department of Revenue here. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, let's see. We have a PA 28 taxpayer inventory. Um, That's just asking for you. Department of Revenue. Sorry. That's that that form is just asking if we're using the other form and we're not. We're not. So. A form to ask if we're, we're using, using the other form. form. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's wow. that's our society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's part of the paperwork reduction. Yeah, now. Take yeah. a form to read. There's another form. So um, that's informational, but we have to sign it. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, entertain a um, motion for that. So P A. Will not be using the PA 28 form in 2020. So moved. And I have a second. Any discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Today is the 23rd already? Mm -hmm. Wow. Flying by. Hmm. 
sir. Thank you. Item E is our um, information distribution category, if you will. Uh, this was a response to um, 7919 7, Selectman's meeting. Uh, George Howard asked a question. I'm quoting here. It says, what kind of information and what kind of frequency the board feels would be beneficial to the residents of the town? And um, we'll all have our responses here, but this is the one that uh, I'll start off with anyways. It says, that uh, we believe that the, I believe anyways, and again, this is my personal opinion, or at least from, from our discussion here, um, that we are currently distributing things that need to be distributed for the benefit of the residents. Uh, we utilize the website, e-news, on a daily basis to update information. Um, residents are always welcome to come down to the town office to obtain any additional information that we're able to provide. Our selectman minutes are videotaped and can be seen any time for anybody who was unavailable for making the meeting. Um, so that's my response to that. Did you have, you folks have anything to add to that? Um, I concur with your response and I think that we also uh, recognize that like when Kevin came in and he discusses things that are um, sort of a new or, or something that's not a usual event that those are always helpful and I think that the same with the police department that they come in and usually update us on something that might be a one-off type of event same with Jay Henry and same with um, Pat, Pat. Mm -hmm. so you know as long as they continue to put things on the agenda that are out of the ordinary events I think that those are good information to pass on to the to the voters and, and the uh, and the residents no, I, I agree with everything I've heard. I mean, a great example was last week when there was a resident that <clears throat> felt like the culvert uh, that went under the road near his property should have been replaced at the same time the rest of the culverts on Black Mountain Road were replaced. And it wasn't. And there were calls made to the state and some folks up down in Concord that hadn't been in touch and weren't clear on what the crews were doing up here and everything else said well uh, yeah let's make that happen before they pave I mean that's the reason we're going through all this extensive mm -hmm. road work right now it's pre-paving all mm -hmm. that road's going to mm -hmm. be paved and so we got a call on like a Tuesday saying uh, listen Pat I know it's short notice but we're going to be up there tomorrow prepping and replacing that culvert on Thursday and it's going to require us to close the road mm -hmm. So we put it out on e-news, and then 18 hours later, they called back and said, no, we're not going to do that after all. <laughs> and that happens on a regular basis with, with the state. I mean, Not very often, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> tugged in all kinds of different directions, but you know, we put out the information we have. It represents the best information we have, and we, we do our best. And that turned out to be inaccurate information, but we wanted people to know, especially if it was going to result in a road closure. Mm -hmm. so. No, I, I agree with everything you guys have said. So thank you. All righty. Uh, moving down to... Uh, can I ask a question? So what's your answer to my question? That we will continue to... Let me read it one more time. It says, I believe the information is currently being distributed and is beneficial to the residents. We utilize the website emails on a daily basis to provide update information. Residents are always welcome to the town office to obtain any additional information that we're unable to provide. Our selectmen and minutes are videotaped and can be seen any time for anybody who's unable to make the meeting. So that's our extent of our uh, information and frequency that we're going to do. Okay. As far as the medium, you probably like better respect to it. I think e-news is an excellent mm -hmm. source of information. Website, I would say, along with that. But again, I ask, you know, you talk about, for instance, the cover. I know Pat put out a word on e-news, you know, the roads will be closed, which I think is like columns of good work kind of thing. That's the kind of information. Right. On the other, another aspect, I sent a note to Bob about what kind of information. 
At the transfer station, we were separating envelopes and so forth from newspaper. And I say, I've been trying to be very diligent about doing that. And then I get up there and said, we're not doing that anymore. Sorry, that? We're not doing that anymore. So I say, well, how come you didn't put a word out and say, don't do that? Those are the kind of things, you know, and uh, as far as, uh, so, another example I always use is that, be it e-news, be it here, incidents that happen in town that the police chief has a view of, you know, that's good stuff. You know, I understand he has legal implications, all that, but the idea of here's what's happening, and, uh, you know, we heard from, again, activity in the drug world, it's Route 16 and all that you hear. Access to information about that is available in certain areas, but why don't we hear about that? Those are the things that I say the education or the information to the town is beneficial. So, uh, back then on the COVID situation, they tore one up there on Carter Notch Road. And, you know, so I wound up, you know, the flag went out and said, how many more are you going to do? Well, this is all. It's not me, Dan. So I called the district engineer. Said, yep, yeah, they inspect the culprits and need to be replaced. So since it's a state road, I said, when are you going to take care of the frost eaves up the culprits? It's been there for years. Well, we can't right now. We don't have any funds, et cetera, et cetera. But those kind of things, you know, you're tearing up a road, you know it's going to be, have some paving. When do we think it is? So people can plan their day. That's the kind of things that, that I see. And uh, communications, we have a variety of ways to communicate. So that's where I'm coming from. Things that are, we know are going to happen. Road closures, uh, we've done good, pretty good on the bridge closure. Mm -hmm. And those kind of things. So that's what I'm saying. Thank you. I think with the uh, the DOT, at least for me, I don't think we had a lot of advance notice on that. Say so again. We didn't have a lot of advance notice on the Black Mountain Road, especially when the Why DOT. Not? Why not? I don't know. I, to be quite honest, they just came up and that was on their schedule to do it, and they didn't give us a lot of notice on that. I was surprised as you were on that, but we did make comments about that. We talked to them and say, can you please let, give us a little more information so we can pass that on to our mm -hmm. residents. But that was one of those ones that just came up on us. It wasn't like the covered bridge where they gave us months and months and months in advance notice on that. But. That's pretty well done. Right. Kind of missed some signage in the town that it was closed and so forth. That's all right. All right. So that's my, my just, so people can understand what's happening, plan their day, and those sort of things that happen across the board. Mm -hmm. You know, things that are safety-wise are important. Mm -hmm. I mentioned you about right. safety. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, as I said, the uh, priority issue for the board, mm -hmm. be it a road agent or be it a police guy, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, safety. like you said, Chief Burley does a good job of communicating, you know, whether it be bears breaking into cars or incidents that happen. And I know that whatever they can disseminate as information, they do. And again, you, like you said, there's some confidentiality issues. But if it is a concern, as much as he can share, he does. Well, yeah, I'm only one. I throw it out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone in town says, yeah, sit down and be quiet, <laughs> I can take that. That's where I'm coming from. That's yeah. All. Yeah. No, I hear you. I understand. We'll try yeah. to do a better so job at that for sure. What's going to happen rather than, oh, it did happen and I wish I'd known. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right, 5F, rules of procedure. Uh, Bob, this is on your gig here. Well, we've been, uh, I've been kind of looking at meeting procedure. I mean, we, we, uh, agreed that we were going to operate under Robert's Rules of Order and what does that mean and so felt like if, if, if that there was nothing that was in writing as far as protocols on how public hearings operate, how selectmen meetings operate and come to find out when we research that that it's pretty typical in towns that there are uh, accepted uh, rules of procedure and protocols for how meetings operate and so 
we took a look at four different um, published operational procedure of how, how meetings operate in towns. I think three of them were in Carroll County. I think it was Moultonboro and Albany and uh, Wolfboro and uh, Barrington had a very extensive 12 page document on how meetings operate. And so we just took a look at them to see what we could glean from those and, and what would be beneficial to pass along for us. I think this document represents a rough draft and I'd just like you two to look at it and uh, spend some time going through it. And if you want the links to the, to the documents we use, you wanna do your own research, you're welcome to do that as well. And um, I mean, I looked at this document and felt like, boy, this would have been really nice to have when I was oriented onto the board, just so I could understand what uh, town meetings are, what they aren't, what public hearings are about, how agendas are built. And so that was the purpose for putting this together. And, and it's the first time you've seen it. So I wasn't looking for input today, but I thought if you could both look at it and maybe, I mean, the end goal is to have a document that we're all happy about that we can vote to approve and that exists. And, and, and just like in other towns, when you amend it, you date it, and you talk about the amendments that you made and things like that. So it's a living document in that sense. And so, um, again, both uh, Julie and, and Julie did, did research and helped with the edits, and we went through it together as a team. And so I thought we were ready to present it to you today and have you take a look at it and let us know what you think. Very good. Thank um, you. Did, oh, go ahead. Nope, I just said thank you. That's it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I just a quick comment. Did you find any of those boards who would have like departmental reports, like the police department or town, you know, transfer station? Or is it just simply the format that we pretty much follow here? Uh, pretty much a general format. There, there was one meeting, uh, one town that listed liaisons, but it really wasn't super clear to me if they, what they meant by those department head liaisons and those committees. Were, were they identifying people on those committees that were going to be liaisons to the board, or was it vice versa? I couldn't really, it seemed like they said every committee elects a member to be a liaison, and so it seemed like they were assigning yeah, committees was, with that task. I think it was just to assign. Yeah. I don't think there wasn't a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly report no, from no, any no, particular no. town. No, because in the sections that they talked about how a typical meeting would look, they did not have uh, departments listed, their department heads coming. Right. So, right. there you have it. Thank you for that. I'll I, look yeah, that over thanks, this week. Julie. And do have one other um, new business agenda item. Uh, just because he's out of town and some stuff's going on. Uh, Pat felt a written report was appropriate for this meeting and it was basically, the month of June was pretty busy for us. Valley Crossroad Bridge was closed May 9th, took most of the month to nail down the scale of repair. Materials ordered, put it together, reopened June 13th. Along with that project, worked out front of the town office. Gary's really got the friends Fence and railing looking sharp, and mm. that's a nice, you know, protective yeah. feature out there for the uh, for the generator. Those two projects, <coughs> grading the dirt roads, mowing, and day-to-day -day operations kept us busy. July is going to be just as busy. DOTs completed their drainage along Route 16. Curbing companies lined up, waiting for them to get here so we can prep for paving of the sidewalk early in August. Bridge over the Ellis River is slated for some type of repair, summer of 2020. Uh, they'll be upgrading the sidewalk from that bridge down where we stopped this year at that time. So that'll be like next summer. Should maybe look at replacing, upgrading sidewalk north from Ellis River Bridge to intersection by Wildcat service station in 2021. So that's a timeline recommendation. Town road work scheduled to start July 22nd. Um, FR Carroll is going to be doing the paving, uh, it will first grind Whitney's Hill Road, apparently that's going to be a reclaim project. Deer Run and Woodpecker Ridge, after it's been graded and fully prepped, they'll put the new pavement down. Also, Top Coat will be put down on Highlands Road. 
Drew did some damage to Switchback Road with their low bed while delivering a machine. Talked to Kyler and Drew about it. They're going to fix it before the fall. And uh, they're still working on the house where that damage occurred, so they didn't want to really rush them to do it right away. They'll, they'll fix it once they pull out. And, uh, and that was it. Thank you for that. Thank Pat for that. Anybody else? Any other new business? That's it. George. Yeah, can I make a couple of comments regarding procedures? From a general sense, I understand procedures, procedures and rules and laws. Under our government is by and for the people. So I understand procedures and rules of the law. We have to fall back on what do the people want, a government by the people. And so when you put out a request and you say, here's the law, my feeling is, here's what they want. I need to know, understand how to apply the law and, and meet the needs of the people. And uh, to stand behind the law and say, I can't, I think is not right. Just, as far as the meeting here, I have a couple of thoughts. The acoustics have never got better. Is there anything that makes it better? I don't know if in the tea leaves, I'm not an engineer or any of that stuff, but it's an ongoing problem. Personally, I have my own hearing problems, but I'm not speaking for that. So the other aspect I would use is any visual displays. I know when we were working on the transfer station, I think we have a pretty good graphic of that, to point out where things are. It's just, again, how does it make it easier for people to understand? So, I'll get off my sword. We are talking about doing an uh, instructional video for the transfer station at some point. Which What's I that? We are talking about doing some kind of an instructional video for the transfer station yeah, it, now it, that it's complete. It, and, you know, I, see, that out, I see this is a, a, a yeah. good point of place to provide that kind mm -hmm. of information. You know, we have a transfer station update. It used to be on there. Mm -hmm. And so, again, the, don't forget that you know the Julies are always available for other questions too. If he does come up with a question at the meeting too, I don't know if you two received the information that I had put in by email previously or not. But the transfer. Yes, I, you asked me to forward that, and I did forward that. Okay, but I'm, I'm asking. I know Bob got it. Mm -hmm. the, the PDF of all, which I appreciate you doing. That was. Uh, a self-effort. <laughs> Didn't even have to ask. But so, uh, those are the kind of things that are information, information. Mm -hmm. So, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any other new business? No. Nope. Okay. Moving on to old business. Uh, fire station feasibility study. We haven't met since, and again, we're pushing the, any update until August 27th. All right. Very good. Um, I just wanted to add, speaking of the transfer station, I did talk with um, Chip Henry um, about doing the lines on the uh, transfer station. Again, we're kind of waiting to finish everything mm -hmm. up there before we, Hank and I, get together and, and do a presentation to kind of make it the way it's supposed to be and I think this would probably answer a lot of your questions at the transfer station when this yeah. happens it but again I'm not inclined to do that until everything is done and we still have to finish those lines <laughs> and according to Chip um, and I talked with Burr a few minutes ago uh, we do have a backup plan if Chip can't do it so hopefully we'll get that done soon uh, unfortunately we don't have a date for it yet um, he has a major project right now and he may not be able to do it, so we have plan B in place in case that happens. And then once that's all done, then we're going to do a very, I don't know, hopefully extensive mm -hmm. uh, informational presentation via the video camera to, you know, outline and have everything finished and properly marked and everything like that, because it's not properly marked now. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's certainly some frustration of some people. Um, and again, that, I just don't want to do this until everything is done. That's that's kind of the game plan on that. 
Right. That's, that's good. The question. Thank you. See, I would. That's historical information. We saw that. I see we can advise people what's going to happen, update it if we need to. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating to go there and all of a sudden, well, tin cans go down here now. Yeah. Or when they first started the renovation, you, be, you don't know where anything is. Mm -hmm. So I, my thought process is advise people, here's what we're going to do so we are in tune of what's happening. And I think a lot of it is because of the fact that they are, well, the less construction phase now, but in the construction phase, when the last two years, we had to move things around. You know, this had to move out of here because we're building here, we're going to move that. And that would be hard to keep up with on a daily basis or a weekly basis. So I know there's got to be a little flexibility from people who go up there and say, oh, geez, this is a little frustrating. I can't, you know, I can't find where I'm supposed to put the paper today. Oh, we moved it over here this week because we're building over here or putting in the compactor. Those things are something that I understand could be probably telegraphed a little bit more, but those things are almost day-to-day -day operations in some cases, and that would be really hard to keep up because we only meet every two weeks. You know, so I certainly understand your frustration on that. I, you know, but hopefully, you know, by the end of you know, hoping by the end of this month that you know we'll be able to you know get things nailed down and be able to make a proper presentation to the town. Well, what I would say though <coughs> that is, if we know what is the plan. If it changes, mm -hmm. we'll change it as we can. Right. And, and, and we can use e-news or something. I know ahead of time what I think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It makes it a lot easier from my perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, again, my, my thoughts, but just to, and, but I would say we have a great crew up there. Absolutely. Oh, my God. They've this, done a nice job up there, for yeah, sure. They sure But I think it's helpful to know what's going to happen as opposed to what did happen. <laughs> Anything else on old business? No, I have nothing. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to public comments. Public comments. Yes, I would like to address Airbnbs are lodging in general. State your name, please. Um, my name is Patricia Mason. Airbnbs are lodging. I don't know if they register to make their house an Airbnb or if, if the town of Jackson gets any revenue from it, uh, but there's quite an impact on people that are buying these lower income housing. And we were looking for people to move to the community and other people are buying it for Airbnbs or they just rent it on a Craigslist. And we have, I have an example, my neighbor across the street used to rent a very infrequent rent to really nice families. We had no problem at all, but he sold his house. And the people that, uh, we, I think even the um, Badger Realtor thought they were gonna live up here. Turns out immediately he made an Airbnb, I have it put bunk beds in, and he has a two um, bedroom septic system. And a week or two ago, five cars pulled up with four people in each car, do the math. And that's the four bedroom and plus safety and we're not getting any revenue from it, and God knows what's going on in there. And plus the cleaning service came and told me they had 13 bags of trash. So we just all that trash go, and you know it's not recycled, it's just stuck in bags. So do we have anything in plans, or are we working on it, for safety, or anything like that? We actually discussed that quite a bit over the last year. Kevin, do you have anything yeah. you want to add to that? I mean, there are our hands are tied in, to some degree because uh, we don't have state regulations in place. But um, yeah, Julie just sent me two articles a while back about there is there is some things that the that the towns can do. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just a matter of, of it being introduced to the planning board and seeing where it goes from there. Right. Um, those two are, remember those two articles yeah. you sent me mm -hmm. pretty interesting. Some yeah, some towns in New Hampshire have adopted some yes, um, regulations yes, yeah. um, but I, I think Airbnb does pay a, a room and board tax now that goes to the state and then the state um, sends but who checks their houses for safety like well you know, there's no in the regulations for that yeah um, so maybe we should have those otherwise the fire department is going to get impacted well, the fire chief's been in here too, discussing this throughout the last year, year yeah. and a half, and uh, 
unless they're advertising that they're um, able to house more than a dozen people, his hands are tied as far as going up and doing a fire inspection. So whether they're um, well, if you have a welcoming more people than that or not uh, is a different matter entirely. So we could put you in touch with the planning board and, and, and the chief and, and you know we can probably get the documents to you that Kevin's referencing and Right. Yeah. The town has done yeah. In sure. Pass, in passing. Yeah. They're yeah. actually on board. I mean, even in Hampshire towns, not right. other towns. Right. In the Hampshire towns. So, I mean, it can be done, and it's really, it's definitely a safety thing. When you, when you see this, it's like scary. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that would be going through the planning board as opposed to us. Oh, okay. All right. James? Yeah, yeah I mean, I. Pat brought this up to me, and <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, you know, from the zoning board point of view, it's a change of use. It's it's lodging now, and I think maybe we have to revisit what lodging means. But it's not it's not a it's not a use that's allowed in a residential district, um, and it's kind of a backhanded way of saying it. It's not allowed, but if you look closely at, at the zoning regulations. It's, it's, it's not an allowed use, and I can't imagine that Mr. Goudreau would allow what's happened up there, because but with that many people there, you know, egress requirements, exit signage, and whatnot, um, I, I, I would just think that it would be something that would behoove the town to look into right before something happens up there. Um, and that just... Uh, I mean, I, I gave Pat the, the zoning regulations, and I, I can't, I can't see that that use is allowed up there. And I, and you know, we can talk about that. Well, no, but it, and it's not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not on the planning board. I realize that, but I'm, you know, if if it were to come before you, you know, um, I think you might have to deny that that's, use. That's what that article talks about. Is right. where it's, it is a change in use. And, okay. and right. It's not being enforced. No. Right. We do have it only on the planning board as well, too. Just FYI. Yeah. I can join another yes. board. <laughs> Actually, I am I am on the planning board um, as the selectman liaison, so we can talk after that, and, and we will get the information, and, and I'll follow up on the articles as well. So. Yeah. It might be a, a good idea to get it on the, to suggest yeah. to them that we, you know, let them know where they can access mm -hmm. the uh, the minutes during the meeting right. on the video where this was discussed, mm -hmm. and uh, suggest that you know it was you know might be a good idea to place that on the agenda and have a conversation around it. And, I mean, it's easy enough to see how somebody is going to advertise a, a house for you know. Has has room for eight, and then the mm -hmm. next thing you know, it's twelve, and then it's considered lodging, but nobody's uh, watching that, and mm -hmm. nobody knows for sure, and, yeah. and and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I'd be I'd be interested to, uh, when that when that is taken up at the planning board, if yeah. you come back and give us a little Absolutely. little rundown or summary of how how that went. Yeah, you know, sometimes the owners don't even know because they think they're That's renting true. it to yeah. eight people instead right. of mm -hmm. 28 people. Yep. Not, not to be the devil's advocate, but as growing up as a kid here, you know, my summer cottage has six bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> and we had two or three <laughs> families come up here right. for the summer, and we would have as many as 20 people in our house. Find a space to crash. Exactly. Yeah. You know, people stack easy, you know. I know. And uh, so I, I can see this, you know, going both ways to say, well, you know, this, you know, what's the what's the limit, you know, mm -hmm. so to speak. And what are my rights as a property owner? Right. Uh, yeah. Is also you know. an, an issue that needs to be. No, it's different know, than renting. In the conversation. Right. Yeah. yeah, but we'll. And, and, and I think that the term lodging isn't quite clear. Right. So it, it may need some further definition in the future, so that we don't have this question coming up. Yeah. So I, yeah, we'll take right. with the planning board. Right. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. I'll bring my, oh, my husband. He's an architect, yeah. too. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, great. Thank you. James. It was serious. When you're talking about the transfer station, what do you mean by lines? The, the parking lot lines right away. Okay. Go park here. Go, you know, that gotcha. type of okay. thing. Okay. You just want to make sure it's yeah. one way. And, the, and, the, and one question I've seen some uh, 
elderly people compared to me having a lot of trouble getting stuff in through those windows, especially the glass one where they, they put an extra level that you to slide things down to make sure. I, I think maybe that has to be addressed somehow, whether there's a ramp outside to get people up higher, you know, and I know it's gonna take away and before you put the lines in. <laughs> You, know, you might need you might need a platform and some kind of a ramp or a step or two, because I, I mean I've whenever I go up there I'm always helping somebody, especially at the glass bin, to, to help. And sometimes I can't even get up there myself. So just I think it's you know some, something else to look at up there. Particularly the glass is tough. I know. Yes. That. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Just a quick comment. Um, just like to say what an excellent job Chris Burley and uh, uh, Ryan McDonald and one of our firefighters, uh, Wells Kelly, did at that accident the other day. Mm -hmm. um, just went right into you know gear and it was like textbook. And you know usually when someone is in cardiac arrest, they usually you have people around so they can jump and start doing CPR. And, you know it gets very tiring, and but they had everything under control and we actually had paramedics come from Conway and. Like I said, they did, it. they did an excellent job. Right. And both of them just, just got their EMTs from uh, Solo. So, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, kind of a professional response is a uh, uh, consequence of training and training and training and practice and practice and what to prepare for. Thank you. Any others? Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I was going to suggest that. Second. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor. Aye. All right. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate Thank your you. input, as always.